c can be any positive real number less than 2018 and we wish to find for how many values of c do the graphs of y equals to absolute value of absolute value of absolute value of x minus c minus x minus x and y equals to x intersect only at the points with integer coordinates that's an interesting question we have lots of absolute value signs showing up and naturally, having too many absolute value signs make this equation harder to work with. So you may say, maybe we should try to get rid of absolute value signs. So how can we make absolute value signs disappear? Before we go on, I want to recognize Gabriel N for being the very first person to correctly answer last week's challenge. A big shout out to him for getting the correct answer 504. And one easy way of doing that is to use some casework. In our case, we can look at two different cases. First case is when x minus c is positive or zero. And the second case is when x minus c is less than zero. Realize that when x minus c is positive, then the absolute value of x minus c is just going to be x minus c because absolute value of some positive number is going to be the same number. So we can drop the absolute value signs when x minus c is positive or zero. But when x minus c is less than zero, so if we have absolute value of negative number, remember that we multiply the number by negative one. So taking the absolute value of a negative number is the same thing as multiplying the number by negative one. So when x minus c is less than zero, Absolute value of x minus c is going to be c minus x, x minus c times negative 1. So realize when we do this casework, assuming certain values of x minus c, absolute value signs are going away, making the algebra much easier to do. But before we start the casework, I want to make sure we understand what's going on. Let's make sure we know c is going to be positive. We know c is positive. That's given to us. So let's make sure we don't forget that. And also realize we want to see when these two graphs intersect at the points with integer coordinates. And since one of the graphs is y is equal to x, if the graphs are intersecting at the point x, y, so let's say the two graphs are intersecting at the point x, y. Because this point is on the graph y is equal to x, we know y and x has to be the same. So if we have an intersection point, x and y have to be the same number because it's on the graph of y equals to x. And that's telling us that we don't really have to look at the points with integer x and y coordinates. We can just look at the points with integer x coordinates because x and y are going to be the same when they intersect. So really, all we have to do, we are looking at the equation. We have absolute value of absolute value of absolute value of x minus c minus x minus x. And we are setting this equal to x. We are setting these two equations equal. And we are looking at what values of integer x these two are intersecting. So all we have to find is for what integers x, what integers x, this equation is true. Absolute value of absolute value of absolute value of x minus c minus x minus x is equal to x. So that's basically the question. And also realize that x has to be positive. x has to be positive because when you take absolute value of something, when you take absolute value of something, this number is going to be zero or positive. So since we have absolute value of this entire thing, we know this graph is always going to be zero or positive. So when these two graphs intersect, we know they are going to intersect at zero or positive y or zero or positive x because of y equals to x. And you may say those x equals to zero work. I don't want to gloss over some facts. When x is zero, does this equation work out? And the answer is no, because when x is zero, when x is zero, we're going to have the equation absolute value of absolute value of absolute value of negative c is equal to zero. And realize because c is positive, remember that's given to us, because c is positive, absolute value of negative c is c. And taking absolute value of positive number isn't going to do anything. So we are going to get the equation c is equal to zero, but c is positive. So when x is zero, so when x is zero, we're getting this erroneous information. This is wrong. So x equals to zero cannot happen. So we know x cannot be equal to zero. So we know x has to be positive. 
So really, the question we have is what for what positive integers x do these graphs intersect? And hopefully the answer we find in terms of c is going to help us constrain c, which is going to tell us what kind of values of c our equation is valid. So we are basically trying to find the positive integer solutions to this equation. So let's start with the first case x minus c is greater than or equal to zero. In this case, absolute value of x minus c is just going to be x minus c. Taking away x is going to get us negative c. So we have absolute value of absolute value of negative c minus x is equal to x. And absolute value of negative c, because c is positive, is c. And we get absolute value of c minus x is equal to x. But because x minus c is greater than or equal to zero, we know c minus x is going to be less than or equal to 0, just multiplying this equation by negative 1. So we know this c minus x is negative. So taking absolute value of c minus x is going to get us x minus c is equal to x, or again, c is equal to 0. But we know c cannot be equal to 0, so this case 1 is not going to get us any solutions. So let's move on to case 2 when x minus c is less than 0. In this case, absolute value of x minus c is going to get us c minus x. So this is going to get us c, c minus x. So in this case, we are going to have absolute value of absolute value of c minus x minus x or c minus 2x minus x is equal to x. And in this case, we have absolute value of c minus 2x, which isn't simplifying very well. So let's do another case work. So let's go case i, where c minus 2x is positive, And let's do case 2, where c minus 2x is negative. So when c minus 2x is positive, this thing is just going to be c minus 2x. Taking away x is going to get us c minus 3x is equal to x. And we have to do case work one more time. So let's say c minus 3x is positive and c minus 3x is negative. And when c minus 3x is positive, we get c minus 3x is equal to x. Or simplifying, we get x is equal to c over 4. So it seems like we have one potential candidate for the solution. And when c minus 3x is less than or equal to 0, c minus 3x is going to be 3x minus c is equal to x, or we get x equals to c over 2. So we have found two potential solutions. Now let's analyze this case, when c minus 2x is less than 0. In this case, absolute value of c minus 2x is going to be 2x minus c. Take away x, we're going to get absolute value of x minus c is equal to x. And remember, this subcase is falling under the case that x minus c is negative. So because x minus c is negative, we have c minus x is equal to x, or x is equal to c over 2. But realize this x equals to c over 2 is not valid for this particular subcase, because when x is c over 2, we get c minus 2 times c over 2, or c minus c, being equal to 0, not less than 0. So you should throw this out. So it looks like we have two solutions, x equals to c over 4 and x equals to c over 2. But just to check our solution, just to make sure, let's plug them in into the original equation and make sure we get an equality. So for x equals to c over 4, we have absolute value of absolute value of absolute value of x minus c minus x minus x is going to get us x. So let's see if this equation is true. Well, absolute value of c over 4 minus c, that's going to be 3c over 4. And take away c over 4, that's going to get us c over 2. So we have c over 2 minus c over 4. And of course, absolute value of c over 2 minus c over 4 is indeed c over 4. So x equals to c over 4 works out. How about x equals to c over 2? Well, that's going to be c over 2 minus c minus c over 2 minus c over 2 is equal to c over 2. I'm just plugging in the solutions we got to the original equation. So in this case, x is c over 2. And just making sure we have the valid equality. So in this case, we have c over 2 minus c over 2, which is 0. So we have absolute value of negative c over 2 is c over 2, which is, of course, correct. So we have found two solutions x equals to c over 4 and x equals to c over 2. But what do we know? We know. We know x has to be a positive integer. We already know that. 
So we know x has to be a positive integer. So we know x is positive integer. And also we want every single possible x. We want every single integer coordinate, every single intersection to have integer value. So in our case, we want to make sure both of these, we want to make sure this c over 4 and c over 2, both of them are integers. So we want to make sure both of them are integers because we want every single possible solution x to be integer. And for what values of c is c over 4 and c over 2 going to be integer? So for what values of c are both of them going to be integers? Well, that should be when c is multiple of 4 when c is multiple of 4. You may say, how come multiple of 2 doesn't work? Well, when c is equal to 2, c over 2 is an integer, but obviously c over 4 is not an integer. We need both of them to be integers. So when c is multiple of 4, we know c over 4 should be integer and c over 2 should be integer. So c equals to multiple of 4 is the value of c that we want. So we're looking at number of positive integer multiples of 4 less than 2018. Well, there's going to be 4, 8, and all the way to 2016, because 2016 is a multiple of 4, 4 is 4 times 1, 8 is 4 times 2, 2016 is 4 times 504, so we have 1, 2, all the way to 504 multiples of 4 less than 2018, so our final answer is 504. Just to solidify our understanding of what our answers mean, let's try graphing the equations in Desmos.com. So if we have y equals the absolute value of absolute value of absolute value of x minus c, minus x, minus x, and let's add the slider c, and we also want to have the equation y is equal to x. Note that when c is equal to 1, our intersection points are 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So c over 4, c over 4, and c over 2, c over 2. When c is equal to 2, our intersection points are 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 1, 1. And note that 0 0.5 is not an integer, so c over 2 does not work out. But when c is equal to 4, our intersection points are 2, 2, and 1, 1. So c equals to 4 works, and c equals to 8 likewise works as well. Both of them are integer coordinates. So hopefully this is helping you see what's going on when c is positive. And just for the fun of it, when c is equal to 0, note that our equation goes like this. When c is 0, every single integer from 0 and up counts as an intersection point. There are infinitely many solutions in this case. So anyway, our final answer is 504.